Hey, Ash. Hi, Taryn. I got a fun fact for you. Hit me with a fun fact, Taryn. Did you? Okay, actually, wait. I'm going to see if you'll guess it right. Are you looking? No, not at all. Okay. Um, Out of <laughs> lemons and limes, one of them floats and one of them sinks. I'm going to go lemons float. <laughs> Why? I don't know. No, that actually, I would guess that too. Because limes are wrong? like dense. <laughs> Shoddy dense. Am I wrong? No, you're right. Oh. Lemons float. But limes sink. I was thinking like, I feel like there's multiple times I've cut into a lemon and they're, they're, they're what do you call it, rind? Rind? The oh, skin yeah, yeah. is so thick and like kind of porous. Yeah. And I just feel like that would cause it to yeah. float. And like if I if someone threw a fruit at me, I would rather them throw a lemon than a lime. Yeah? Because <laughs> it's bigger. It's the same as like Softer. a softball or mm-hmm. a baseball. Like, even though the softball is bigger, mm-hmm. it's not like baseballs are like harder Hard. and like more light, you know? Softball broke my front David, tooth. David killed Goliath with a small little stone. Mm-hmm. That's, small and hard. That's so funny that you said that because I was listening to an episode of The Toast this morning and she said a David and Goliath reference. What's going on today? Sunday school. <laughs> Am I right? It works. <laughs> it teaches you things about David and Goliath. Lemons and limes, am I right? Obviously. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. As you guys know, here on UA, we talk a lot about relationships, and we all have so many different types of relationships in our life. And I think a common misconception is that relationships have to be just easy. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work. Like us, Ash. We like put us, in Taryn. the work. We sure do. If you're thinking of starting therapy, I highly recommend you give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. And the best part is that you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Taryn and I have talked about it on the podcast before that sometimes trying therapists is like trying on a pair of shoes and sometimes you have to try on a few before you have the perfect fit and we love that they don't charge you for trying on (laughs) a different shoe you know what I mean become your own soulmate whether you're looking for one or not visit betterhelp.com slash unsolicited today to get 10% off your first month that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash unsolicited Hi. Hi. And welcome back. Okay, no, no. That last note was a really cool, intricate harmony. Mm, well. That was beautiful. It's just, Did you feel it? Could you feel the difference? I heard I heard, heard, and felt the vibrations. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, welcome back to another episode of Unsolicited advice. advice, which is actually very solicited from you guys since you mm-hmm. guys are asking us advice. So yep. there's that. Um should we hit them with some fun announcements first? Yeah. Our biggest merch sale is still happening. Yes, it is. Still happening right now. It's going till the second. Um, so if you haven't gotten your merch yet, get on it. There's so much stuff available mm-hmm. still. Um, so get what you can while you can because the sale's not going to last long. Yeah. And neither is this merch. So get to shopping. Yeah. And get me all and, the things. Me and Ash, no joke, we literally were in a tax convo and they were like, hey, well, what if like some of the stuff we do 50 and some of the stuff we do less? And me and Ash were like, no. we want 50 on everything. Yeah. 50% off. Yeah. And I think, you know, with like the top of the year and um, just wanting like a, a, a fresh a fresh look, we decided we just want to time to clean out the closet. Yeah. I also need to clean out my closet. Same. So this is just like the season of like fresh starts. So we are getting rid of everything. Um, so send stuff to your grandparents, to your friends, to your neighbors, get stuff for like Valentine's Day for, you know, your favorite listeners yep. and, you know, just stuff like that. So get all the goodies while you can. Also, this is just a great friendly reminder to write in a story if you have a story. Yes. Um, where do they send it to, Taryn? Advice unsolicited pod at gmail.com. gmail.com. Also, you know, it doesn't have to be your story. It could be a story you've heard of. It could be like be someone else's story that topic. you maybe ask permission to for sure, for sure. write in for. Or you don't, and then you just change you just the do names. It. Um, we support all of it. It could be like pop culture things, mm-hmm. like whatever you guys want to talk about, we want to talk about. 100%. Also, we have a subscription service. So if you are just wanting a little bit more of Taryn and I, so guess what? Yes. 
you can get more of Taryn and I. Supercast. Taryn and I actually did an extra great episode today on Supercast. Supercast. All about being roommates and what it's like living with a friend, like pros, cons, things you yeah. struggle with, like how to make it work. And it was such an extra good episode that I wish you guys could hear, but it's on Supercast. <laughs> so, so sucks to suck. <laughs> this is a just friendly reminder that, um, you know, it's it's probably cheaper than your latte that you bought today. It so is. So you should probably, you know, give just it a look-see. It. Just yeah. give it a, check it out a little bit because mm-hmm. it's super cheap. It's so much fun. And it's more of Taryn and I if you are, if you've got that itch for a little bit more. The itch. It's a good kind of itch. Um, how are you, Ash? I'm doing so good. I, um, As you guys know, I got sick. And then now my boyfriend got sick. So this whole last week, I was like taking care Ew, of him. Because you were kissing. Because <sighs> we were doing all the kissing things. <laughs> um, so Thanks. it was honestly inevitable because I've been sick for like weeks. So it finally got him. And I we, I feel like I'm, I'm like emerging from the cloud of sickness. Yeah. Back into society, uh, went to Taryn's future sister-in-law's, I don't know why that gets me every time, Yeah, future sister-in-law's bridal shower and a party in the same day. And I was like, hey, people. <laughs> hey, how's everyone doing? Like, hey, world. Like, I'm back. And that's how it felt. Yeah. And um, it feels feels so good. It's also like a cozy, rainy day today yeah. in LA. And, and that's really fun. Yeah. Um, what is my update? Uh, oh, I re-downloaded dating apps. She's back on the grind. I'm back. Back on the grind. Um, and it's actually been good. I have two guys that I'm actually engaging in a conversation with. Wow. Because I'm a player. What an, what an <laughs> honor for them. No, literally, if only they knew. But like, I can't say that because then I'll sound, you know. Wait, what? I can't be like, you're lucky I'm talking to you. Oh. oh. <laughs> if only they knew. True. True, what, true, an, true. what an honor, what it means to get that far. Also, I feel like you're not a player. Like dating apps, it's understood that you're probably talking to multiple people. No, I know. But for me, because I'm like the most like loyal person ever, like even me just like talking to two guys at the same time, I'm like scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dating apps, you're supposed to. Oh, good times. If you're not talking to more than five people, are yeah. you utilizing the app? Yeah. No. But one of the guys, he definitely has, I feel like, my humor. Because I have that very, like, in-your-face kind of humor. Like, I say the things that everyone's like, you, you can't say that. You know what I mean? So, like, he, um, he, one of my prompts says, it says, like, I'm known for dot, dot, dot. And I put my, my Lego collection, my Lego collection. I don't know why I said that word. And so he was like, wait, I need to hear about this Lego collection. So then I, like, said a little thing about it. And then he was just like, oh, my gosh, I'm so intrigued by this. And then he was like, so now I like you. And basically, that means we're we're getting married. Yeah. Which like is that's how I joke. But then some guys are like, that is that's totally how you you just say married. Yeah. So did you mention marriage? Yeah. Before we've even met. Because I was talking about like my man cave that I want someday. And then Mm -hmm. I was like, don't worry, I'll share with you. And then I was like, so you just proposed to me, right? And he's like, yeah, of course. So like, it's yeah. just, he has like my type of humor. Perfect. Um, So we'll see. We'll we see. Will, we will see. I can't wait for an update next week. Yeah. This, I will say this time around, because we're on, you know, 45 or whatever times I've re-downloaded the apps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it comes in seasons. It's it's the it's the it's a really good start. Mm, Usually yeah. I'm like, it's been sometimes a week. Sometimes it's a slow no start. Sometimes it's a bad start. Yeah, we love a good start. Yeah, it's a good start. That's so, exciting. That's the new thing. Also, I planned a bachelorette, and then the next weekend a bridal shower, and it was very stressful. And now no one's depending on me for anything, Thank so God. I feel amazing. So it's time for an everything shower. Yep. It's time for a self care Sunday. It's time for maybe a date. No. Yes. No. With the funny Lego loving guy. Maybe. I mean, he sounds like he was made for you. Yeah. He's also a ginger. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> the club I've been trying to be a part of for years <laughs> now. All of you guys think Taryn's a natural. She's just desperately trying to get in. So if you end up with this guy, there's a huge chance. I know. There's a huge chance. I just dye my baby's hair. You can do like a, what's that? Remember in biology, they had you do like you and your partner had to like create a child together. Yeah. And it was like your genes. No, but the hair gene comes from the mom, doesn't it? It does. And what was, but are actually, I can't, I can't remember. 
which side it comes from. But it was either. very interesting because my mom's a redhead. I'm not. But the redhead genes still showed up in my like little biology really? test. Yeah, because it was me and my friend Serge, and he had brown hair, and our kid came out with curly red hair because <laughs> he had really curly hair. And, and just, he had he doesn't have no, but it like but it for some reason oh. popped up, and it was. But it see, was that's through your mom, though. It's through my mom. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I would screw our children. It's a possibility. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Maybe he won't want me because I can't continue the lineage. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I th- I think stuff like this is fascinating. Like, um, my boyfriend's half black. I'm obviously like just super white, <laughs> and um, I have blonde hair. His mom has blonde hair, oh. so like we could end up with like oh, a sandy, beautiful baby, like a sandy, a sandy, yeah. a sandy brunette or a sandy blonde, or like a light brown with like possible blonde hair. Uh. I've seen a lot of pictures of what our kids could look like, and yeah. I was like, wow, this is. They're beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to have to humble them. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they're so pretty. Yeah. Um, but I think genes like that is just so fun. No, it is really interesting. It's really, it's just interesting because some of the most beautiful babies I've seen, the parents are like, no offense, but like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. And then they pop out this child that I'm like. And you're just like, whoa. What on earth? Yeah. And then, honestly, sometimes I've seen the opposite. Yeah. A thousand like, percent. beautiful people pop out like a wonky looking one. <laughs> and you're just like, I and, don't understand yeah. what happened. Yeah, it's unfortunate because my brother had kids first and my niece and nephew are two. And I don't think this is just because I'm biased because I feel like everyone who's met them is like, they're just so stunning. Like both of them are so beautiful. And I'm like, that's so much pressure because mm-hmm. I'm going to pop out the wonky one. Yeah. Who like, <laughs> no, you don't know that. He's a little off. You, well, you he's going to be weird already just because I'm his mom. Totally. So, yeah, I hope he's cute. Hopefully he has some looks to you combat like how I the say weird. He, I just want a boy first. Because you can drop him a few times, you know? <laughs> the, and it's and fine. They'll survive. <laughs> the girls will come back and stab you in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, who? Should we, like, get into it? Yeah. I was telling Ash when we were doing Supercast today, I feel like it's been ages since we've been here even though it was just last week yeah yeah but ash is like no it doesn't feel like it for me but that's because i've been in in bed sick slash just in bed or not in bed taking care of my boyfriend who was in bed sick so it was just i haven't been doing much so that's why but yeah let's go ahead and get into it uh let's start it off with a tearing it up as we normally do this is the funny stories that you guys send in which just make my day yeah they do every single time um this one is titled appropriate for today don't run in the rain a tearing oh, it up. You were also thinking about running in the rain. I know. So I, as you, if you guys are curious, I'm still running. Yeah, she is. If you doubted me, I beat you. I am still going for it. And it has, you know, I think I've gotten a little better. Everyone talks about I've this. Getting a little I think better. I've gotten. I think I've been getting a little better. Um, everyone talks about this running high. I haven't felt it yet. Um, it's definitely Have after you hit a two mile. Weeks? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm on week three. Oh, so it's a habit. Have you? It is a habit. The one time in my life, one time, I was like, I'm going to try to be a runner. Yeah. And after two weeks, one day I woke up and I was like, I want to run. And I was like, that's disgusting. No, yeah. So I, I'm definitely at a place where I'm enjoying the runs more. And I'm definitely like, I want to run. And I'm it's it's happening Um. Every day, like I'm feeling more frequent about it, um, but I'm, I've officially hit three weeks. Congrats, Ash! Which That's is very huge. exciting. But I haven't had that like runner's high mm. that everyone talks about. Um, I it has to be after the one mile mark. It must be like after like between the two to three that you actually hit that high. Um, I have never. I don't think I've ever. I did Nike Running Club like a meetup once, and I remember feeling like I was going to throw up, and then all of a sudden I felt like I could do better. And then all of a sudden I was going really fast. And I, I, maybe that's what they were talking about. But that was after multiple miles. I have a very personal question. Yeah. Every time I've tried to run, I almost like <laughs> my pants. As a, I think that that's like a normal thing? thing. Well, I think. I literally peeing. had to call my brother because I was like, I'm having an issue and I'm too far from home. Remember we had to turn it up of someone that was try- was running and then had to like stop on the curb yeah. and sit because they basically were having that problem. Literally. It is a thing. Um, I need I need a poll from the audience. Uh, Michaela, <laughs> Mandy, is this yeah? Both of you? I can't see you, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> when you run, do you ever? You're like, oh my gosh, it's happening. 
<laughs> I do. I do think oh, it is I a thing. Oh, I thought you said yes. <laughs> They're like, no, it's just you. <laughs> well, this is why I can't run. That's my excuse in my head. I'm like, well, I can't. Well, I think I think you should have the cup of coffee before the run. I don't think it's you a take coffee. Care I think of the it's business, my body. And literally. then you go for a run. I get a flush of like chills and like cold sweats and then I'm like I'm gonna sh- Taryn myself. has the flu every time she runs literally I'm allergic <laughs> That's, I'm all allergic. of that just sounds like yeah okay the well. flu. today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp as you guys know here on UA we talk a lot about relationships and we all have so many different types of relationships in our life and I think a common misconception is that relationships have to be just easy but sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work like us ash we put in the work we sure do therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all types of relationships whether it's friends work your significant other or anyone Guys, whether you've experienced major trauma or just need help navigating a small chapter of your life, therapy is so helpful. My entire family does therapy. We have learned and grown so much from it over the last like five years when we started. And um, I don't regret a single moment of therapy because I've walked out of that room every time a better person for it. And I highly, highly recommend you get on the train. If you're thinking of starting therapy, I highly recommend you give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. And the best part is that you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Taryn and I have talked about it on the podcast before that sometimes trying therapists is like trying on a pair of shoes and sometimes you have to try on a few before you have the perfect fit and we love that they don't charge you for trying on (laughs) a different shoe you know what i mean become your own soulmate whether you're looking for one or not visit betterhelp.com slash unsolicited today to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash unsolicited Back to our tearing it up. Uh, don't run in the rain. Let's get into it. Hi, girlies. I love listening to your pod Monday mornings on and off until like Tuesday night. She must be bulk like she didn't start from the be- she's starting from the beginning and bulking up. So she listens to the podcast oh. between Mondays and Tuesdays. I think is what also she's I feel like if you have shorter rides, mm-hmm. it's probably like you break it down. She goes on her way to work, but maybe her ride is only like fifteen minutes, so yeah. it takes her two days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Um, She writes, I have both a tearing it up and an advice submission. The advice submission will be on a new email so I can title it. Um, But I would be honored if I heard you girls reading my words on this podcast. Anyways, let's get into it. First, the tearing it up. I don't know if this is how you guys spell it, LOL, but this is how it makes sense in my head. And she put tearing it up. That's exactly how we spell it. My name. Spell my name right? Yes. Nice. She's going to be anonymous. And she says, so this happened senior year of high school. Senior year of high school during our grad party season and my school took grad parties super seriously. And if you remember high school at all or being a senior, everyone wants to be the cool kids. Yeah. Right. You want to be accepted. You want to be cool. You want to be seen as cool. You don't want to be seen as anything but cool. You want to be like me. You need to relax. <laughs> Someone needs to humble Taryn real quick. <laughs> Uh, She continues, like, we all dress up nice and plan our summer days, attending three to five each day. So my friends and I were at one of the really popular guys grad parties and it started to rain. So everyone at the party went into the garage. My friends and I were planning on leaving to go to another party and our car was parked quite far down the road. We all didn't want to go out into the rain to get the car, but I wanted to be the cool one and impress everyone. So I volunteered to go get the car and pull it up for all of my friends. At this point, everyone is stuck in the garage waiting for the storm to pass bored and they all watch me volunteer to go get the car. So I left the garage and started to run and I didn't even make it more than five steps before my flip flops. <laughs> oh no. I'm just <laughs> running in flip flops. Oh, that's, I can't even walk in flip flops properly. Running is hard, let alone rain, let alone yeah. flip flops. Like there's two very big things yeah. here that are just not, it's not a good mix. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
before my flip flops failed me and I slipped in the rain. It was not a graceful or even an easy fall at all. I tore up both my legs and hands and they left lifelong scars. Oh. I, I quick I panicked and quickly got up and limped the rest of the way to the car, trying to pretend that I wasn't severely hurt. Once I got to the car, I tried to relax, even though I knew I never wanted to show my face to these popular boys ever again. No. Then it clicked that I still had to pull the car around and pick up my friends. And this was, in fact, the most embarrassing moment ever. And I am so happy high school is over at this point and I never had to see them again. I attached a picture of my legs right after the fall just so you can see how nasty the fall was. Still to this day, I refuse to run in the rain. Thanks for reading. And I hope it made you giggle. And you even see her flip flops in the photo. Oh my god, I'm excited! <laughs> oh crap, dude! She literally <gasps> destroyed her legs. Like she fell hard. Oh my gosh! For our listeners, like these aren't little scratches. They're like dents, and there's multiple on her knees, and she's super bloody. Your blood is very bright. It's very red. Yeah, it's a beautiful color. It's very. It looks like someone just took took a marker and just drew that ouch dude um i know that kind of fall and trying to walk that off it must have hard. been tough because your knees like automatically tighten it's almost the, one of yeah. those like you can't help it it's not that you want to cry but it's almost one of those falls where you just you have to cry because it just hurts that bad mm-hmm. i'm so, so i'm so sorry dude i think my worst because um in softball i hated wearing the like slider shorts and I also, fun fact, even though I played like varsity all four years, like I could not slide. That was my one thing. And all my teammates like made fun of me for it. So I never wore slider shorts because I just wouldn't even try to slide. Yeah. Like if I ran and they caught it, I'd be like, ah, I'm out. Like whatever, yeah. which my coach hated. But there was one game and it was like, I I was, I was rounded third and I, I could hear that like they were throwing it in. And so I was going to home, like going to home base. And I was like, I have to slide. Like yeah. I knew in my mind, I was like, if I don't slide, we're not going to win. Yeah. And this is selfish. Like yeah. I have to slide. So I literally just kind of like crossed my fingers and like went for it. And somehow I slid, but I slid too hard. And I, for long, like I was just like, and I just felt the whole upper, like back half of my thigh up to my butt cheek, just getting like shredded. Yeah. But it's okay. I was safe and we won. It was great. But when I got up, I was like, this is bad. I'm not going to, I'm not going to recover from this ever. Yeah. And it was like the biggest strawberry going like all down the side of my leg. And I like stuck to the sheets like at night, like it was brutal. But yeah, that was one where I was like, immediately I was like, I'm unwell. Unwell. Um, I did a, a slide without a slider without sliders once and same thing it's brutal i was auditioning for the softball team in high school and auditioning? someone auditioning yes <laughs> wait <laughs> they were having softball tryouts and i was in band That's and i cute. auditioned for softball that is the cutest thing you've ever said <laughs> and um one of my friends who was my best friend at the time was like if you slide the coach will let you in <gasps> Like if you show Gee. like you're committed, yeah. like you will be a part of the team. Yeah. Um, and I just remember being like, oh, OK. And I again, like I had had a, one short stint of softball in fourth grade. And that's when I broke my tooth and I never played again. Yeah. And then in high school, all of my friends did sports. All my girlfriends did sports. So you felt like you and had I was to. like, oh, I want to go out for softball yeah. so I can hang out with my friends and I want to be with them. So I was like, OK, I'm going to slide. <laughs> But again, I hadn't I hadn't played yeah. since I was a kid. I I didn't even register that I didn't have sh- the proper like attire for sliding, so I just did it, and it hurt like a mother. Yep. And everyone goes, ooh. And <laughs> my friend Jasmine was like, I didn't mean you. And I was just like, you said he would let me in. And for the record, I did not make the softball team. What so, a liar! Liar! Freaking Jasmine! Oh man! Yeah. It's Anyways. Rough. It's a rough life. It's a rough. It's a rough, rough game. Rough life. Rough game. Um, yes. Dude, the other. Okay, so we made CIF champions. So I actually have a CIF ring, mm-hmm. and it's this big thing in my family because I'm I'm athletic, but I was like I just said, like I was very like I'm like like Jack. What is it? Jack of all trades, master of none. Master whatever of it's none. called. Like I'm I'm good at just like 
picking up things and being good at it, but I don't push myself to be like excellent, mm-hmm. which I'm working on. It's fine. Um, and so like softball, like I was good, but I wouldn't, I'm like not going to dive for a ball until I get competitive and then I'll like go all out. Mm-hmm. But we were in the CIF championship game. Is that this huge field, like hundreds of people there watching, like it was epic. And I played second base. So the right fielder, like a ball, like a grounder went through and went to her and she had her glove down on the floor and was running like with her glove down instead of like running to the ball, then putting her glove down. Yeah. She stepped on her glove and flipped forward and face planted on the ground, but on like the chalk line. So when she stood up, her whole face was covered oh in chalk. God. And you know me, I can't, I have a sickness you when people laugh. fall. So I was like, I had my glove over my face and I was crying hysterically, like laughing, yeah. but trying to face forward. And then I would like turn around and be like, hey, are you good? And then I'd like have <laughs> to turn back because I was like physically dying. Because you know when you're not supposed to laugh, that's right. when it's the funniest. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was a brutal one. I remember Damn. too. Yeah. That was a turn it up. Okay. Uh, should we like get into it? Yeah, let's get into it. Get into it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to preface. This story mentions chesticles a lot and i'm like a five-year-old and i can't say words for anything Can you i'm just explain gonna explain what chesticles are because literally no one knows <laughs> i'm just gonna call them cherries and we know what we're referring to do we boobs <laughs> boobs i'm so immature i really am so I swear immature. it's because you work with children i know i know <laughs> i'm just no, like i remember come on. like in health class i could never say the official word for any part of the body uh, whether it's male or female I could never say it and there were so many times my teacher would just look at me like come on but I I'm like a teenage boy like I, get, I literally like, I remember going to your family's house once and I said something about period and, and you I just like, looked at me and you were like <laughs> my brothers have never no one said anything like no one responded but Taryn <laughs> did and then told me we don't talk about that in this house <laughs> and I was like um <laughs> okay <sighs> Two women live here. I know. Good time. <laughs> it's my house is not. There's no female energy. The boys ran there's it all. Two. Yeah, but like you've met my mom. My mom's so like freaking down. It's just, she it's like goes so, with the flow. It's it's very true. That's such a true fact. It's just it blows my mind. Whenever I go somewhere and I'm just like we li- we bleed every month, and then we don't talk about it. Yeah, I mean it's. Are we not supposed to? Now make I'm you different. Feel comfortable, but I think because like. It, I just was so I didn't want to make my brothers uncomfortable. And I think the dynamic of them being younger, it was like I felt like, ah, this is inappropriate to like talk to them about when they're so young. Like it's weird. Like Ryan would have been like literally in elementary school. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just like different. But you can't Mm. relate because you have sisters. It's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. Like you'll never understand and I'll never understand the freedom (laughs) to just talk about things, you know? Yeah. Guess Good so. times. Okay. Anyways, okay. How am I supposed to compete with Instagram cherries? Honestly. <laughs> okay. Hi, ladies. I just discovered your podcast, and I'm working my way up from the first episode. I'm on the love and fitness and office dilemmas. Oh, my. Episode from December 2019. Oh, my gosh. I was literally, I was trying to no. rack my brain. I was like, That's when so was that? Ago. I can't, couldn't even it's tell so you. Ago. Um, she said, so you could say I'm a little behind. I've been listening to y'all while I'm at work and you make the day fly by your unsolicited advice is solid and you both seem so down to earth. I would love to just sit and have a chat. So if you have a moment, I would love to pour the tea. Please do pour away. Make it steamy. Make it piping. I'm in a relationship that's coming up on four years. Ooh, that's that's a good amount of time. That's long. That's a high school career. Yeah. Um, We both have flaws and we've been working past our first major hiccup in the relationship. So that's good to remember. So four years, this is the first major thing. He is addicted to social media and always on the phone scrolling. That's so interesting that Mm -hmm. it's the guy because usually I feel like it's opposite. I I feel I feel like social media has made it more. It used to be like, sorry. I don't want to go on a tangent, but no, it, it used to be like it was always like influencers. It was always like women oriented, like beauty, fashion kind of stuff. But now that there's Barstool and now that like even like 
even like Sports Center and ESPN there's is so all much on sports, socials. Yeah. It's there's a whole like world that's strictly just like the straight male that will like a hundred percent suck them into. So it's yeah. It's across the board now for everybody. Yeah, my brother, it's interesting. Like we'll be sitting on the couch and he'll be scrolling through his TikTok. And every once in a while I'll just like watch him scrolling like his for you page and it trips me out because it's all sports Mm -hmm. all like people falling um like funny stuff it's like curated never anything that like comes on my page Mm -hmm. and it's just interesting that it can do that you know Mm -hmm. sucks you in man okay i try really hard not to look over his shoulder at his phone but sometimes it just happens on more than one occasion i would happen to see a pair of cherries on his phone Mm. He would brush it off saying how sometimes things like that pop up. I shrug it off. Like, why would he lie about that, right? I've asked him straight up about it. Like, hey, why are you looking at that? And he would say things like how girls would post pictures like that sometimes on random groups. And he would just scroll past it. Sounded plausible. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a couple months. I had accepted a friend request from a guy at work who was buddies with a couple of my work friends. Thinking nothing of it, I accepted, and then this guy started messaging me. He's not flirty, and I'm not attracted to this guy at all, and my other friends who are also female talk to this guy on the daily, so I thought it was just innocent. But apparently, my boyfriend thought otherwise. We got into a huge fight and almost ended the relationship. I'll admit I was in the wrong because it was a friendship. This, okay, anyways, I'm gonna try to save my thoughts. This Mm -hmm. one's a hard one, too. I'll admit I was in the wrong. Friendship between the opposite sex is tricky, but I thought my relationship was steady enough that he wouldn't be threatened if I had a guy friend. Fast forward again, I was sitting on the bed next to my boyfriend. Our headboard has a mirror on it, and he was sitting with his back against the headboard, and I was facing him slash the headboard. So I had a full view of his phone. I watched in shock as he lingered on a picture of a bombshell with her cherries out. Mm -hmm. I watched him click her profile, go through more of her pictures, then follow her. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Y'all, I was livid. So that obviously- And it wasn't a friend. It wasn't, yeah. Rando. Yeah. So that obviously turned into a huge ordeal where he tried to make me out to be the bad guy, saying it was so shady how I was looking over his shoulder. (sighs) She says, yeah, okay, go off, King, with yeah. the clap <laughs> yeah. emoji. So shady. Well, we're literally, he's sitting right next to her, yep. right? Yeah. It's crazy. I told him how uncomfortable it made me feel knowing that he's looking at these beautiful half-naked women on Instagram. And he tried to flip it saying how he was mainly trying to fulfill his manly needs. And it's not like he had a chance to. Whoa blank her and following these instagram on women is no different than watching porn or reading a steamy book ew not at all i'm sorry not at all not that's not that was the wrong answer yeah uh yeah i I hate that yeah that's what i'm saying this is a hard one to just read through and not not make that also just makes no sense but continue. I'm sorry, but if anyone tried to be like, it's my manly need, I'm sorry. Manly need? I'm sitting I'm right sorry. next to you. Yeah. We're literally sitting right. I'm sorry. Play with me. Turn your phone. <laughs> what? I don't get it. Like, yeah. what did that yep. do for you? Yep. My confidence took a huge hit during this. Yeah, no kidding. I'm sure his did too. As I said, we're both in the wrong here. No. Mm, no. And we both have things we need to work on. I'm trying to trust him on his phone, but he's always on it. I've since deleted social media so I can focus more of my time on important things like self-care, my family, him. But he hasn't done anything to help regain my trust. Mm. My self-esteem has always been low. I've always been bigger and my stomach is as smooth as the Appalachian. As in, it's not flat at all. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Same girl. Um, I've had two kids, so gravity is not my friend, Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. I was going to use my tax return to get a boob job, but then car problems happen, and it was either new headlights or new headlights. Yeah, that was good. (laughs) That was so good. She put, I'm funny, and I agree. Yeah. I've also picked exercising back up to help me drop some inches around my waist. And I know what you're saying. Don't modify your body to please him, but I can't help it. I've never been happy with my cherries and I can't get rid of my belly fat with sit-ups 
And how do you make the lady stand up without some help from a plastic surgeon? So ladies, here I am on my knees asking for advice on how I can trust my boyfriend again. I don't want to break up with him. I know we fight and argue, but he's my favorite train wreck and he's making, (laughs) he makes getting out of bed worth it. Anyway, thank you for reading this. I love you guys and your podcast never fails to make me laugh. Uh, okay. Like, where do we even begin? Um, I think, I think there needs to be a clear conversation about, about the, the difference between, (laughs) it's it's not, he literally followed her. I understand scrolling and things pop up. I understand that. Like I've been next to my boyfriend on TikTok and some random like shirtless dude is working out and I'll like quickly like scroll past it because I'm like, oh, I don't want to see that and like make him feel uncomfortable or me feel uncomfortable. So I'll scroll real fast. I don't then click his profile, scroll through all of his videos and then follow. And I think that's such an that's such an intentional like I like what I see action. And that's so inappropriate, especially The audacity of doing it with you sitting right next to him. But I think the difference is, though, and we just started talking about algorithms in the beginning. That makes sense for that to pop up on your algorithm because you follow a lot of fitness content. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's a shirtless guy working out, but TikTok or whatever is like, okay, she... She's saved a lot of like fitness things or fitness influencers, so that makes sense. But I'm telling you right now, it's not normal. It definitely never happens for me that random girls will come on my suggested page that are just like, and I've seen those accounts before uh-huh. that are like just full blown like girls who are like trying to promote their OnlyFans or mm-hmm. like whatever. And it's no hate. Do what you got to do. Like people can post whatever they want. But for him to be saying that it just pops up. What am I supposed to do? No, 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 no. You've clicked enough times to why Instagram is like, oh, he, he spends a this. lot of time yeah. looking through profiles like this. So we're going to start suggesting the things that he likes. Yeah. So I think that's ridiculous. Also, I mean, if I'm sure if you scrolled through his followers <laughs> or like who he follows... If I if I was dating someone and he followed any accounts like that without having a personal relationship with that person, I would be triggered. Yeah. I'd be so mad about it because there's no point unless you're trying to like physically have you want to see these photos of this girl like half naked. There's no reason for yeah. it. Yeah. And the the fact that he's trying to compare you having an actual friend who that, there's who no... you have literally kept a distance from, who you have like a healthy respect for each other. It's an actual friendship. Him comparing that to him following this rando online is not even not, it's not even, even close. close. It's a completely different thing. And you were actually doing it in a respectful, like normal way because it is normal for people to have different all types of gendered friends. That's just that's and... natural and normal. And honestly, should it should be a thing yeah. because that's how you know that your person is normal you know but like and I'm the first one that is very hesitant over friendships with the opposite sex when you're in a committed relationship yeah but I'm not saying every form of friendship I'm saying like you should not be hanging out one-on-one you shouldn't be texting each other late at night you shouldn't be like investing or like going to them to tell them the problems of your relationship Mm -hmm. there's there's boundary lines but I have men that I work with that like we've followed each other and they're married and there's nothing weird about it at all. So, but I don't know if you made this connection, Ash. What do we always say about people that accuse others of cheating and doing inappropriate stuff? They accuse because they assume that you're doing it because they are also doing it. Yup. So that's all I'm saying. That was the second he freaked out over that. Yeah. I was like, Mm. he's doing sketchy stuff. He's messaging people. I've said this before on the podcast, but I used to work with this girl who was the absolute angel and whose husband, or I guess he was her boyfriend at the time, fiance, would call. And if she didn't pick up the phone or, or call him the second she got off work, he would call our desk, our work desk to check in on her. And I remember telling her at one point, I was like, I was like, why? And she was like, he, he's he's worried that like something's going on or I'm cheating on him. And I was like, are you? And she goes, absolutely not. And I was like, I think he might be on you. And I literally said it like that. Yeah. We were close. Yeah. 
you sit there at a desk for like nine hours for multiple times with people you get you share stuff and I just remember being like he wouldn't think that if he wasn't so confident that it could happen paranoid about it yeah yeah no I it's hard for me because like you've said oh this is our first hiccup or like I love everything about him but it's just this one thing but this is like a massive red flag to me and I I would not be shocked if you actually sat back and looked at your relationship, if mm-hmm. there's not other things that you've just kind of brushed aside because it's doable, you know? Yeah, like I loved the little thing you said made it sound so sweet. Like I love my train wreck of a boyfriend. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to put up with certain things. And if someone's a train wreck and 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 they're honest and open and vulnerable and they're trying to like fix things and they're including you in, a, in it and you want to be there for them, like that's awesome. But if they're if they're somehow disrespecting you or if they're somehow putting you down or holding you back or or treating you differently or possibly cheating on you, that's not something you put yeah. up with just because you're in a committed relationship. Yeah. That's not fair. And I can only imagine how much worse it would get if you get married. Oh, my God. And I just want to say, like, I already see the pattern you're going down and it. it scares me for you because you are putting it on yourself to do all this self-work, to do yeah. all this self-care, to better yourself. Like and you're even off though, socials to help, you know. Yeah, and even not. though you're convincing yourself that you're doing all these things for yourself, I'm sure he's very much tied in the back of your head of like, well, things will get better if I'm more desirable looking or, or if, if I'm more this. if you lose weight or if yeah. you have a boob job, which, which is ew. such, it's such a toxic Yuck. train to go down. But... The part that really affected me is how you said he's done absolutely nothing to help you process what has happened. Mm -hmm. And I've I mean, I've told the story of my breakup a thousand times, but me and my ex fought about a bunch of things. But the the reason why the last fight was not a big deal. But what broke me was how much he did not care that he had affected me. It Mm -hmm. was so he was so callous and just like. I'm crying and I'm like, this is really impacting me. And it was the fact that like he just had, he was like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm still going to go. I don't care. Yeah. And that was what broke me because if you're with a person, whether you think you're in the right or the wrong, you should care if your actions affect them. And so that to me was so much more of a like blaring red flag of like this person who's supposed to be like the love of your life and like you're supposed to depend on like, you're literally sobbing in front of him and he's like, this is not affecting me at all. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so I hear so much in this story that is scary to me about him. Um, and the fact that like he's just increased his socials and like is on his phone all the time, like even though like what you guys have been through and the fact that he's on the bed with you but still looking at it, like there's just so much about it that – I don't know. I just am not getting a good feeling, to be honest. A hundred percent same. Me neither. And I think this is actually one of those situations where I think it's more dangerous than you think it is. And yeah. I think it's more scary than you think it is. Like sometimes you just, I would much, sometimes it's just so much easier for them to be an asshole for you to be like, okay, screw you. We're done. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. It's with, it's when there's these like underlining things, these like behind the back things that aren't enough to make a big deal out, out of it. But in the full picture mode, you you see, you see someone that you don't actually recognize, mm-hmm. and I think this is a very slippery slope that you're on, and it sounds like it's been going on for a while. And I think what he's what you're seeing is a glimpse of like who he actually is. Like I, th- I think over time, people show us who they really are, and I think all of these things are are pointing to his character. Yeah. And I don't think he has a good character. And is that something that can be fixed? Yes, but that is not your responsibility. So I don't, I don't you, like do you, him. And no. I don't think you should be with him. And I also don't like the way, if you want new boobs for you, awesome. Do it. Do yeah. it. If, it, if you, I get it. Like I, I've always been like, oh, after I have kids, I might do like a mommy me makeover yeah. or something. Like I totally understand that. But I hope that you're doing it simply because you want to do it for yourself. I hope it's nothing to do with him. Because the last thing I would want is for you to do something and then resent him because he actually is the one that made anything. you do it. Yeah. And I do do not get new boobs thinking he's going to love you more. I also have a really freaking hard time with the whole, like when a girl finds something on a guy's phone and then he's like, 
I, that's disgusting. You don't trust me. Like, like I no, what's feel disgusting like is what's on your phone. Ev- <laughs> and every single one of my friends that snooped on a guy's phone and he freaked out, guess what? He was messaging mm-hmm. multiple women. He was cheating. He was like watching an ex- excessive amount of porn when that was not something that they were comfortable with in their yeah. relationship. Yeah. And Every single one of them, the guy flipped it and was like, you're so gross. Like, so you don't trust me. And I just have a really hard time with if you are in a committed relationship with someone, if a person flinches, if like your phone's grabbed or whatever, like to me, I'm like, why? Like, I would want my boyfriend, my boyfriend will have my passcode. Like, I wouldn't freak out if he's going through my DMs because like. Mm-hmm what would I be doing on there? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just think like, I have a really hard time with that. Cause it's like, they get so wrapped up on, you don't trust me. That was a violation when it's like, well, you're doing sketchy stuff, which obviously she picked up on. Yeah. And I think there's a difference between going on your partner's phone and searching through their DMS for no reason. And yeah. also, or there being things leading up to that that are pointing to something's going on. It's not like you gr- you're grabbing his phone for shits and giggles just to see what's popping up. Yeah. Just like, oh, I'm bored. Let me go through your direct messages. Like, no, that's not that's not the situation most women are going through their partner's phones because they have a gut instinct feeling that yeah. something's going on. Like he's not looking her in the eye when he talks. He's not having like actual conversations with her. They barely are like kissing or having sex or anything that's like important, like intimacy wise or even like dates. Like they're being ignored. Yeah. And all of these things are pointing to something's going on. That's why they're fishing. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's so different. And I, it's very gaslighting for the guys oh. to then completely yeah. turn it around and be like, no, this, you don't trust me. That's disgusting. I also think that if you break someone's trust, the next chapter is not about you. Mm-mm. And you have to be okay to be uncomfortable to prove and like rebuild that person's trust. So for me, if I caught a guy like looking at all these girls, profiles and whatever I would expect some understanding from him if I was like hey I've just been you've been on your phone for hours and I'm stressing out like and I feel like I want to see like what you've been looking at or like I want to see who you follow or DM and because even though that's not something that I would naturally do like I'm not that type of person to be like show me your phone and who have you been texting like whatever Mm -hmm. but if someone breaks my trust I might need that a few times to just like okay to reassure myself you know like if if, uh, this isn't necessarily your situation but if something were to happen and you know your partner did break your trust I'm saying you and you Taryn are in a relationship with someone he broke your trust it's I think it's fine to be like hey like just a heads up I'm going to have to look on your phone a few times to make myself feel better because of the trust that you broke. And it's not a, I hate you. This isn't a, I don't believe you. This is a, I need to do this a few times before I feel sane again, you know? Yeah, or you need to go through your followers or like who you're following and delete those girls. Like, I I feel like that's very valid if that's that's what you need. I think that's valid if something's happened. Yeah. I don't think you, again, I don't think you like go in and just start going through someone's Instagram page <laughs> just because you're officially in a relationship. No, but in this situation, but I in think this it's very situation, yeah. When multiple things have happened to prove that he has an issue with following girls, like cherries no, out dude. girls, then like obviously something to needs fulfill to change. his manly. Ne- oh my gosh. Nothing has I'm made sorry, me feel more grateful me. to have a boyfriend who's not on socials than like stories like yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Be- Literally, yep. like I, I can't imagine, listener, like writer, like what you're going through, and that would that would that would shatter me. Like that mm-hmm. would completely break me. And I feel like you need to somehow, if you want to try to save this relationship, you need to somehow articulate that to him that what he's doing is shattering you. Yeah. And 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 once you fully crack, like there's no there's no bringing this back. Like we're gonna be over. I think you need to give him that clarifying sentence of if you don't fix this. It's over. And I think he needs to hear that for it to resonate and hopefully click in his head. Hopefully he'll get his together. But if he doesn't, I highly recommend you end it. <laughs> also, after four years, yeah. this man should know how important trust is. Yeah. And from what I've read, I would trust this man as much as I would trust a fart after eating Taco Bell. OK, like seriously, <laughs> there is nothing about this man that gives me any confidence. Literally none. And it's it's what's wild. And this is the other thing. This is the other thing. 
not that I'm condoning looking at porn or any of that kind of stuff. I've always been like, listen, I understand if, if you guys are separated. I understand that it's hard and, and I, I get it. Do I love it? No, but like I, under, I understand. Like that, it makes logical sense. You're laying in bed next to him. The audacity of him literally scrolling, following, and liking this girl's page while you're sitting there in bed next to him. That's a whole new level of addiction, in my opinion. I agree. And and it's not it's no longer just a little temptation that he might be struggling with. I think it's a literal addiction that he needs to he's I think he said it. He's getting his manlyhood fix because he actually needs it every no, single day he's, because yeah. he's that addicted. But I do I do think with Everything that comes in a relationship, both people have to be on the same page. Yes. So, like, if that's how you feel, Ash, and, like, you and your partner have a comfortability of what's okay and what's not, Mm -hmm. then, like, you can do whatever you want in a relationship. If it obviously, like, Anonymous is not comfortable with it. Like, I, I personally would not be comfortable with it. So, if that's where that's where it changes to where it's not about your manly need it's Mm -mm. about us respecting each other in a relationship and what we're okay or not okay with and if he doesn't respect that and he's purposefully seeking things out even though he knows how much it's bothered you and flipping it to be your fault i'm sorry but like that's all the signs yeah that i need right there you don't need to hear anything else you really don't and it's 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 like taryn said whatever whatever the rules are the rules should be followed. Like yeah. if you view porn as a deal breaker, that's fine. Yeah, but you need to make sure that you it's communicated communicate mm-hmm. to that to them so that they can understand that, and then they can either agree or disagree, and you go your separate ways. But like you need to have this conversation with him. Holy crap! I'm a man. <laughs> Ew! I'll fight you. A I'll man fight you. would be hooking up with his girlfriend who's in bed next to him, not scrolling on his phone looking at photos. Ugh. That's disgusting. The way I would smack that phone out of his hand. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, It's not even a question. Oh, no, no, Why would I look at photos of cake when there's a plate of cake right next to me? You know, like, it's not, it's it's so stupid. So I hope you realize how stupid your boyfriend is. And I hope you articulate that to him. And I hope you make it clear that he understands that what he's doing is not okay. And that if he doesn't fix it. It's a, I hope I hope you, I also I hope you think it. it's really hard sometimes like I feel like especially women because we are so mushy and emotional and we love so big and like we are the ones that are going to like give more chances and like all this stuff right mm-hmm. like I think that's one of the beautiful things about being a woman is we have a capacity that like men don't sorry mm-hmm. I'm gonna say it um but I've heard so many women say well, yeah, this is an issue, but everything else is great. It's just this one thing. And it's like that whole analogy. Like if someone gave you a chocolate chip cookie, but they just put a little tiny piece of dog poop, Mm -hmm. (laughs) would you still eat the cookie? No. No, that cookie's a turd, okay? So it's like, it's one of those things where I think you just really need to reflect. Yeah, this is only the one thing. And yeah, you love him. But in It's not just one thing. It's It's really speaking to so much more on a bigger level. So I think you need to step back and be like, okay, as a person that I'm going to put my trust, my love, my heart into, is he deserving of Mm -hmm. that? And from what I've read, as of now, I don't think so. I don't don't think so either. And I think social media, I think you're right. I think social media has made, has made, Everything that used to be very black and white, very gray, like yeah, it's grayified everything. And mm-hmm. it, it, you are your partner, whoever you are, is going to come across things on their for you page, is going yeah. to come across things on Instagram. And that's not their fault. And we don't blame them for that. It's how they react. It's yeah. how they respond to it. It's are they then clicking the page and following the freaking profile of nothing but titties and, yeah. you know, girls in like string bikinis that's that's a whole other thing like if it comes across their page that's it happens it's fine it's whatever how they react is everything I agree and I think he reacted poorly and I think he clearly has an addiction that he hasn't even begun to take in to take in any kind of accountability for or maybe doesn't even realize it can sneak up on you stuff like that especially on socials because again so gray but like he might not even be aware of how addicted he is to these things. And I think even when it's gray, I think it needs to be treated as what it is, an yeah. addiction. And I think 
once you once you are able to put this problem, this social media problem, um, into the category of addiction, it becomes a whole different oh, ball game. Sure. All of a sudden, you're treating it differently. All of a sudden, you're talking about it differently because it's no longer following a girl on socials. It's oh, you have a porn problem. Well, yeah, and that's what I'd be curious is next time you guys talk about this and have an intentional conversation where you're like, hey, intentional conversation and say, hey, I don't think I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable, blah, blah, blah. And he tries to brush it off. Oh, it's just my manly thing. I like ew, to look at it, blah, ew, blah, blah. Worst then response. I would casually be like, OK, so can I go through your DMs? Just like casually be like, OK, so I think for me it would help if I could just like go through your DMs and see that you're not messaging yeah. Or talking to anyone like it's just purely If you're just following visual. accounts and it's all visual aid, sure. And if he doesn't right away be like, yeah, fine, go through it. If he flips and starts talking about how you're so insecure, that's always. Or doesn't let you. That, that's always the big one. You're so insecure. You don't trust me. The fact that you need to look through this says so much about you. If well, he the starts. Fact that you're freaking out if, says so much about yep, you. If he starts gaslighting you and saying like whatever and will not give you the phone, I think that's all the clarity you need. Yeah, I'm. I'm really sorry you're going through this. I feel like that's such a sticky that's such a sticky situation, but I don't I think we've made it very clear you don't deserve to be putting no, up with she's this in so any way. Funny. I'm sorry, but you sound like you have the, the best personality. You sound amazing. You're so funny. You sound intelligent. You birthed th two children? Yeah, like you're you're a warrior and a you mother. Don't, you do not need this freaking court jester. Like you need a freaking <laughs> knight to come yes. in and to Seriously. take over and to be a man. Yeah. Fulfill my manly needs. Fulfill I'll, my manly the way, needs. The way I hope someone tries to say that to me and someone's recording nearby because I yeah. will freak out. I, well, that I will is freak the out. worst sentence. Fulfill my manly Ew. needs. Blech. Blech. Disgusting. Yeah. Okay. Well, Dump wow. his <laughs> <laughs> That's like a new girl where she's like, are you, what? So you think I should break up with him? And he's like, dump him. <laughs> dump him. I don't like him. Yeah. He's the worst. I don't. I'm sorry. I know you love your train wreck boyfriend, but I know I do I not know. like what I'm seeing. It's, I hope if I hope if you have this confrontational yeah. conversation with him, I hope he responds correctly because you know people can change. I do believe that, but we just want to clarify. I mean, y'all know how much of a mama bear I am. I get very protective. Even I'm feeling mama guys, berry right now. And Ash gets. You know what yours is though? Is it's the justice of it. It's the it's the justice. The justice of Whereas it. me, I'm like. How dare you make her feel like this? Yeah. And I think that's why Taryn's this fighting one hit for, both for of your us. emotions. Taryn's fighting for your self worth. And I'm like, he's wrong. He's, <laughs> oh, dang. He's wrong. <laughs> there is right yeah. and there is there is no gray right here. This, this is, is the is perfect wrong. story. It got both of us yeah. heated. I so hate that. I just, I want to clarify. I don't want you to feel like we're judging you yes. for if you stay with him or not. Obviously, we only see this little snippet and yeah. we fully support you and what you think is right. But I do think that the the picture we've seen, you deserve so much better. Yeah. And so make sure that you either he changes to match up with what you need and want or you find someone else that's going to be man enough to do that. Yeah. And fulfill his manly needs somewhere with else. you other than a photo. You, what you should do is dump him and then send him a Venmo to pay for his first month subscription of OnlyFans. <laughs> Be like my parting gift. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun with your hand. See you yeah. later. <laughs> I'm dead. I hate. Wow. I, well, I literally, usually we do two stories, but I feel like that one got us so freaking heated. We that literally we, we just don't have it. time for a second episode. <laughs> you can. I'll start off next week's. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but that's how you know we're passionate when we can't say, stop talking about. I was it. gonna say that's how you know. Like we 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 are so invested in your guys's lives. Also, I feel like this is a. This is a very like prevalent story right now. Like I think a lot of women go through this and I know for me it's almost become something I've done like especially like on dating apps if a guy puts like his Instagram handle I'll go and that's one of the things I look at is like what kind of accounts they follow mm. because there have been guys that were on paper like when I'm looking at the profile I'm like oh my gosh this guy seems perfect we're vibing having a good conversation and when I went to his profile he f an alarming amount of not just like swimsuit models, whatever, like that still would bother me, but I would get it. Yeah. Um. But I'm talking like straight up, like almost like porn accounts, yeah. like an aggressive amount. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like, 
I don't like I don't even want to pursue to see if you'll change this. Like to me, that's told me all I need that's to gonna know. Be, well, that's that's and being I aware unmatched immediately. of yourself oh, and knowing yeah. that that's going to be an issue for you. Why oh, would you even try? One thousand percent. Why? Why even get remotely invested yeah. when you know that that's going to bother you? And men and women are just different. Like the way like a woman looks at a hot guy is just different. I mean, there's some there's some crossover for sure, <laughs> but I feel like. For us, like, it's a, I don't know, it's a lot more of, like, different things. Like, the way, like, the thirst traps, like, it's us falling in love with a character. It's, like, an actor who played this character that we were obsessed with. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Jeremy Allen White. Like, no one was thirsting after him that much. And then he played his character on The Bear. And yeah. then everyone was like, uh, yes, chef. <laughs> yeah. And then he comes out with all his, like, Calvin. Oh, my God, like, his Calvin Klein up. campaign. Same yeah. thing with the guy from Saltburn. Yeah. Like, I had never even seen anyone, like, gush over him. And then after that, like, now all the stuff coming out, people are like, hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, like, it's just a little bit different. And then if you study, like, the makeup of men, like, it's very visually driven. And there's just certain things. So it's, like, him saying, like, oh, it's his need he needs to fulfill. Like, well, we all have needs that if we all just fulfilled our need without thinking of the consequence of how it affects anyone else, mm -hmm. it would be chaos. Yeah. It'd be the purge every day. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> every so single day. It's not an excuse. I'm it's sorry. It's not an excuse at all. And it's actually a really horrible excuse. The way yeah. he was, like fulfilling my manhood it's not like i've like done anything with her ew i hate him that's I how he sounds in my mind that's just that's how i heard it too but also that's if so you guys weird. work it out i'm so happy for you <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm in my mama bear mode so like i'll kill him <laughs> well I'll, i mean we are supposed to take the side of our writers that's true so that's true. we're just doing our due diligence yeah, of having your back and you know, if you are going into this confrontational conversation with your boyfriend, I hope you know we have your back. We and do have we, your back. We only want you to be the happiest, healthiest self that mm -hmm. you can be. Yeah. And we personally don't see that happening with this guy. But if it does, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> um, love. <laughs> we love. Conquers all. We love love. <laughs> um, but yes. We just want what's best for you. Yeah, so we really know do. that. We really do. Um, we will not be reading a second story because it was <laughs> so long. Um, but thank you so much for writing in. I know you are not the only person, human, who is dealing with this kind of stuff. It is yeah. very tricky. It is very gray. It's part of the new society that we are in. And we will all have to navigate th this in like different aspects of our lives. Like whether it's with your partner, it'll be with your kids. It'll be like, at, you know, different areas of life just involve around involve social media and you'll have to navigate that when that comes yeah um but i i know so many people are listening and and really resonating with what you had to say so i hope mm -hmm. that was very helpful um if you have a similar situation if we want to like have a whole like social media topic like please send in your yeah, story actually would be really interesting uh, yeah like if you've dealt with this but in some kind of different way like Please send that in with all the details and um, social media centered fights yes. in relationships. Yes. Social media issues in social relationships. Social media has ruined my life here. Because. Has blank. Yeah. Like my boyfriend won't let me post this or I can't mm -hmm. be friends. Like I'm just very curious how it's affecting because I didn't really have to deal with that in my relationship. Well, because I didn't. I, the last time I dated someone was when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. So <laughs> we, it wasn't Instagram even like a just thing. Started. Literally. <laughs> um, but I'm just very curious, like with how fluid it is and with the fact that now it used to just be who you followed. So you had a lot more control of what you would see. But now with Instagram pushing things, I'm just really and curious TikTok, what that's. The algorithm has changed the game because now it's it doesn't matter who you're with. Whatever video shows up next shows your algorithm. Yep. And I think that is, it's obviously very telling of like the user. And I think that it's going to bring up a whole new wave I of agree. things. And why don't we all just navigate it together? So yeah. send in your st social media stories. And um, yeah, that'll be a fun new Yeah. I was just uh, going on a... Every once in a while, I'll see like a hot hockey player or something. And then I'll go through this thing where I'm just looking up all... NHL teams and like looking at all the hockey players and like following the hot ones right mm -hmm. which I can do because I'm single okay mm -hmm. um but I was like doing I was like looking at all of them and I appreciated so much there were so many of them that had pinned their wedding post yeah. so it was like 
all their other stuff was the same and it was like not them with their wife it was like them, their hockey content yeah. whatever they're like hey but just so you know I'm married thing was like <laughs> the post of him him and his wife like getting married and honestly I appreciated that so much because I was like cool good to know moved on you're like, you know cool. as a single girl you're like cool next you know literally it just makes it easier it was like that one girl who went on TikTok remember the I couldn't t- I could never tell you her name I couldn't tell you but she went on TikTok to co- to go after what's her name from Jersey Shore for hitting on her husband who was a football player wait what I think I missed this it was wait who from Jersey Shore I don't know it, I don't know not Snooki? Snooki it was Snooki's friend Je- uh, Jenny I couldn't tell you her name but she I thought she was married though apparently went apparently the wife was on the field waiting to meet her husband Saw Snooki and Snooki's friend, and Snooki's friend kind of gave her like a once over, like look over thing. She was like, okay, she's rude, whatever, doesn't think much of it. And then later, that after the game, her husband goes, oh my God, the weirdest thing happened, shows her that this girl had DM'd him, <gasps> even though, again, it's very clear that he's married. He was one of those, like, her, their wedding was penned. There's videos of her and her kid with him. The audacity. She messages the player, was like, can't wait to see you per, like play later whatever like rooting whatever um and then the this wife i freaking love her she goes on to tiktok and just blasts, blasts her it. oh and literally doesn't hold back says her name like says absolutely everything says she knows it was her because she saw the outfit and here's a photo of her outfit and then just like screenshots the comment that she messaged her husband and she just put her on blast and it was the funniest thing I've ever seen dude the way people I feel like they think like oh Taryn's so sweet she's so nice but the the side of me that comes out like if I were walking with my husband and I saw a girl look me up and down like that the way I would be like Hi, can I help you? Do you have a problem? <laughs> yeah. Did you smell a fart or do you have a problem? Yeah. Like, do we need to have words? What's that face for? Like, when, the way I am so protective over the things I love. Yeah. And if someone's trying to come at my man, it's yeah. not a good It's not a good situation well, for even, anyone. The girl even said it. She was like, I understand he's hot. Like, I understand going to his page. But once you get to his page, it is very clear he's, like, happily married with kids. The action of DMing him <laughs> yeah. anyways yeah. is bold. I understand you going to his page. He's hot. I get it. Bold move. The fact that you still DM'd him after I know you scroll wow. at least twice and saw our wow. wedding, our child, like, Bold and then proceeded move. to do that. Wow. Bold move. Anyways. I hate everyone. Sorry. Anyways. <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, should we wrap it up with the dad yeah, let's joke? Let's do it. Let's do it. What did the buffalo say to his son when he dropped him off at school? Are you thinking hook? I just felt like that would be something you'd say. I was like thinking water buffalo and then I was thinking buffalo wings and then I kind of stuck around wings. You're not close. I'm just going to say it. I don't know. Bye, son. Ah. Get it? Bye, son. That was good. That was really good. Guys, if you made a dad joke, you already know the drill. We love you the mostest. Um, check out our Supercast subscription account. Check out our merch sale. It yep. is going on currently right now. Um, and if you have a story that you would like to send in, please take this moment to do so because we would have zero content without you guys. Yes. So please, <laughs> please send that in and we will talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.